only way we'll get through this project in one piece is by whizzing through the things you already know so I can spend more time focusing on the new bits. So be prepared for abrupt changes of pace, fast, slow, fast, slow as appropriate. First things first, I hit this pane on the side here and open gamesc.swift. We'll add our background picture inside did move to view. We'll say let background equals an SK sprite node with the image named slice background. Background.position is CG point X512 Y384. So in the center of our view. Background.blend mode is dot replace, i.e. ignore alpha. Background dot Z position is minus one by everything else. Then add child background. Beautiful. Next we'll add two new lines of code. One is physics world dot gravity is equal to a CG vector with dx of uh, zero and dy minus six. And then second one will be physics world dot speed is 0 0.85. So this first line here sets the gravity of our physics simulation to be less than the Earth default. Now the Earth default is minus 9.8, which is a standard thing for all games because that mimics what Earth has by default. But I'm using a slightly lower value, minus 6. So items stay up in the air a bit longer. They have less drag pulling them down. I'm also telling the physics world to adjust its speed parameter, this thing here, which causes all movement in the game to happen at a slightly slower rate. Next. We're going to call three methods to set up our game. I'll write subsystem first. One is create score. One is create lives. And one is create slices, like that. I'll call all three of those things inside did move to view. We'll say create score, create lives, create slices. Boom. Call them all here in did move to view. Alongside those methods, we've got to add a few basic properties. Our game score as an integer, plus as a label node, so we can see it on the screen. We're going to track how many lives the player has currently, starting with three. And we'll have an array of lives images, all SK sprite nodes, that let us see on screen how many lives we have left. So let's add those now. We'll say up here, var game score is an SK label node, implicitly unwrapped. Uh, our score is zero. Did set, i.e., when it's changed. Game score dot text is score strings revelation score. Then we'll say our array of uh, lives images is an array of SK sprite node. And by default, the player has three lives like that. Boom. This should all be old news at this point. If nothing else, this should show how far you've come. Now for the new methods. We'll start with create score down here. This will create the label node with a font, give it some default text, align it correctly, give it the right font size, and add it to our game scene. Nothing complicated here. We'll say game score is an SK label node. Using the font named, I'll use chalk duster. We'll do game score dot horizontal alignment mode is dot left rather than center default. We'll do game score dot font size. It's going to be 48 by default. Then we'll add that to our game scene by saying add child game score. For its position, we want to position this in the bottom left corner of our screen. So we'll say game score dot position is CG point X8 Y8. Now that should have score zero as its default text, which we can do by doing game score dot text equals score zero or by just saying score equals zero. And that will trigger our property observer up here, this did set, and make it have uh, score zero by default. Next up is the create lives method. This is going to create three SK sprite nodes and position them at the top right corner of the screen. We'll add these to our lives images array so we can show whether they have a life or not as they play the game. So we'll say in here, for i in zero up to less than three. Let sprite node equals SK sprite node with the image named uh, slice life. The sprite node's position is going to be a CG point. Uh, we'll use a CG float being 834, so right towards the edge of our screen, plus I 
times 70. So it'll be 0 times 70, 1 times 70, and 2 times 70 to push this thing to the right. So it'll do a first on the left, then a middle and the right. It'll draw them all in that x positions. Then we'll say for its y position, it's going to be 720. So very near the top of the screen. We'll add that to our scene by doing add child sprite node. And then add that to our lives images array as well by saying append sprite node. Boom, like that. Remember, this array exists so we can cross off lives when the player loses one. That leaves the create slices method, and this bit is new. In this game, swiping around the screen will lead a glowing trail of slice marks that fade away when you let go or keep on moving. To make this work, we're going to do three things. First, track all player moves on the screen, recording an array of all their swipe points. Second, draw two slice shapes, one in white and one in yellow, to make it look like it's a hot glow. And third, use the Z position property to make sure the slices go above everything else in the game. Now, drawing a shape in Sprite Kit is easy thanks to a special node type called SK Shape Node. This lets you define any kind of shape you can draw, along with line width, stroke color, and more. And it will render it to the screen. We're going to draw two lines, one for a yellow glow, and one for a white glow in the middle of the yellow glow. So we're going to need two SK Shape Node properties. Let's add those now. We'll say var active slice bg, the background one, is an sk shape node, implicitly unwrapped, and var active slice fg, another sk shape node, implicitly unwrapped. So those are our two slice node shapes. And finally, down here in the create slices method, this is where we create them and configure them correctly. We'll say active slice bg, the background one, is an SK shape node. We'll say active slice BG dot Z position equals two. Active slice FG, the foreground, is another SK shape node. Active slice FG dot Z position is three. So even further ahead of the background one. Uh, for the background slice, we'll say its stroke color is a UI color using red one, green 0.9, and blue zero, alpha one. So it's got a yellow tint to it. And it has a line width property of nine. So quite chunky. For our active slice FG, the foreground slice, we'll say its stroke color is UI color dot white. And it's going to have a line width property of five. So thinner than the background one. Then add child, uh, active slice BG, and active slice FG like that. Add them both to the game scene. So the background slice has a thicker line than the foreground. And it has Z position two, whereas the foreground has Z position three. It definitely appears on top of the background. After that, we're using Z position one for bombs, and Z position zero for everything else. This ensures the slice shapes are on top, then bombs, then everything else. 